Good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to our weekly KPIC Bulletin, and today is September the 2nd. Hard to believe that we're already into September. Uh, my name is Jean Taves, and I'm in Calgary. I'm pleased to be here with my colleague Marjorie Newman, who's in Edmonton, and it's the Alberta team today. Um, we're going to update you on some of the things that have been going on and discussed over the media in the last week, and there seems to be a lot of things happening. Um, so uh, Canadian authorities have issued several ministerial instructions regarding uh, everything from entry into Canada through to employers who have foreign workers working for them. Um, so the very first thing we're, we're going to talk about is that um, they've ex the Canadian government has extended travel restrictions on international travel now to um, September 30th, 2020. Uh, they were um, implemented under the authority of the Minister of Health through the Emergency Quarantine Act and um, the Minister of Transport through the interim orders under the Aeronautic Act. And these restrictions can vary but depending on where the foreign nationals are coming from, but um, COVID-19 symptomatic travelers will not be permitted to enter Canada. And uh, regular immigration requirements and admissibility provisions must still be met by all travel and entry into um, Canada. So uh, for those departing from any other country other than the United States, uh, in the air mode, foreign nationals uh, coming from uh, other than the U.S. are prohibited from boarding any aircraft for a flight to Canada when they're not covered by any exemptions um, in the order. Uh, and departing uh, from the United States, foreign nationals uh, are prohibited from entering Canada when uh, they are traveling for an optional or discretionary purpose. So that's the travel restrictions. So Marjorie? Yes, thank you very much for that kind introduction, Jean. Uh, actually, I'd like to correct you. It's only September 1st. Oh, is it First September 1st? September, uh, yes. Oh. And it's also <laughs> uh, Alberta Day. Very of Alberta and Saskatchewan because they're twins. Yes, <laughs> okay. Now, this next update, I'm very excited, but there's a new temporary Remember, temporary public policy that will allow visitors to apply for a work permit without having to leave Canada. Now, visitors, uh, Minister of Immigration, uh, Honorable Marco Mendesino is aware of visitors who are currently in Canada and have a valid job offer. And then this temporary public policy will allow them to apply for an employer-specific work permit and if approved, receive the work permit without having to leave the country, which is really nice. Good. Thank you very much. Because they realized that during the pandemic, temporary residents who remain in Canada were encouraged to maintain valid legal status. Now, with air travel limited around the world, some visitors to Canada have been unable to leave, while some foreign workers had to change their status to visitor because their work permit was expiring and they didn't have the job offer to be able to apply for a new work permit. Some employers in Canada have also faced uh, ongoing labor and skills shortages throughout this period, including those who provide important goods and services that Canadians rely on. So, guys, to be eligible, an applicant looking to benefit from this temporary public policy must first have a valid status in Canada as a visitor on the day that they'll submit the application. Second, you have to be in Canada I've been in Canada in August 21st because this was the day that they announced this temporary public policy and remain in Canada. Third, you have a valid job offer. So it has to be valid and a genuine job offer. And number four, you submit an application for an employer-specific work permit that is supported by a Labor Market Impact Assessment or LMIA or an LMIA exempt offer of employment no later than March 31, 2021. That's next year. And of course, just like any other application, they have the applicant must meet all other standard admissibility criteria. Now, any type of visitor who meets the criteria is eligible to apply under this new public policy, including those who are super visa holders, business visitors, 
and those who entered Canada through a global skills strategy work permit exemption. And finally, foreign nationals who arrive in Canada as visitors after August 24, 2020 are not eligible under the public policy. I would like to repeat that because I have so many inquiries, you know, from people out there who phoned me, like, you know, if they're eligible for those visitors who will be coming to Canada after August 24. No, unfortunately, I have to emphasize that foreign nationals who arrive in Canada as visitors after August 24, 2020 are not eligible under this temporary public policy. And they have to have valid job offers, right, Marjorie? Yes, they have to be, yes. And that LMIA as well, right? Element A based, right? Element, yes. And LMIA. so when they talk about March 21st, they're talking about an LMIA that should be approved by March 21st. By March 31st, 2021. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that's, okay. I think that's a lot of uh, uh, people asking about that too. What does that mean, right? So, yeah. 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 So, so it should be either, um, uh, sorry, uh, employer specific work permit that is supported by an LMIA or an LMIA exempt offer of employment, not later than March 31st, 2021. Right. Yes. Right. right. Okay. Oh. Okay. So um, next, we're going to talk about students. And I know that there are so many students that are emailing all of our colleagues across Canada because they're not able to travel and they can't get into Canada. So there are concerns as to what they should do. And I know for myself, many of my students don't even have their study permits. And so they're just waiting to see what's going on here. So um, there have been three measures that have been introduced for um students and they're regarding the post-grad work permit eligibility okay and these uh, changes have been implemented to provide more flexibility in terms of the uh, post-grad work permit program for students who want to start their studies in canada online from abroad so uh previously um the government had indicated that anything that was uh, going to be done online would be taken off of the length of their um, postgrad work permit. So right now, the changes that have been introduced are they're saying that students can now study online from overseas until April 30th of 2021 with no time deducted from the length of their future postgrad work permit. So you can study online overseas and still get your uh, full length postgrad work permit and the time deducted from the length of the future postgrad permit provided 50% of the program is eventually completed in Canada. Okay, so you can still do your online studies till next year and no time is going to be deducted from your uh, future postgrad work permit as long as this is only 50% of your um, program of studies. So people who have been enrolled in programs that start between um, eight and 12 months in length with a start between um, May and September of this year, will be able to complete their entire program online from ab abroad, and they will still be eligible for a post-grad work permit. I'm gonna repeat that again. So students who have enrolled in a program that is between eight and 12 months in length, with a start date between May and September of 2020, are still gonna be able to uh, get their post-grad work permit, even though the entire program has been completed online overseas, okay? Also, the third um, change that has been implemented is that students who have enrolled in a program with a start date of May, between May and uh, September of 2020 and study online to April 30th of 2021 and who will graduate from, from uh, more than one eligible program of study will be able to continue the length of their program of study when they apply for the post-grad work permit in the future as long as 50% of their total studies are completed in Canada. Okay, so again, 
Students have enrolled in programs starting May to September of this year and study online from up to April of 2021 and who graduate from more than one eligible program of study. Uh, they can uh, continue, com combine the length of their programs of study. And when they apply for the postgrad in the future, as long as 50% of their programs, the total studies are done in Canada. So if you're in two programs and you finish one program and the second program is still um, not done and that you have to come to Canada to do that second program in order to uh, get the um, postgrad work permit. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I hope that was confusing for everyone because yeah. it sure was confusing yeah. for me. <laughs> Changes are really amazing. Like I'd like to commend the government of Canada and especially yeah. the Minister of Immigration, right? For introducing these changes. Like we're sending a message out to the world that hey, you know, Canada welcomes international students. So yeah. here you go. These are for our international students. So yes, this is really good news. And thank yeah, you yeah, for that very thorough awesome. explanation. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Very flexible. Go ahead, yeah, and Mark. To be eligible for this measure, students must have submitted, of course, a study permit application before starting a program of study in the spring, summer, or fall 2020 semester, or the January 2021. And all students must eventually be approved for a study permit to be eligible to those uh, changes. Yes. All right. Now, thank you, Jean. So our next update is uh, something to do with temporary foreign worker program, and this is actually from the um, from Service Canada and a combination of Service Canada, ESDC, and uh, Immigration or, or, or IRCC, because uh, the government of Canada. The background is that the government of Canada has received allegations that some employers are requiring temporary foreign workers to remain on the property where they live and in some cases work when not at work outside of mandatory quarantine or self-isolation periods. Amidst these reports, the government would like to provide the following reminders. And also, this is meant as well for, uh, we have temporary foreign workers listening, or most of the third party representatives, that while in Canada, temporary foreign workers have the same rights and protections as Canadians and permanent residents under applicable federal, provincial, and territorial labor and employment standards. An employer cannot restrict a temporary foreign worker's off-duty conduct except when, for example, such movement is restricted by a government-issued order such as those relating to states of emergency or public health. Now, they also said the temporary foreign worker program does not provide employers with the right to limit the free movement of workers, such as movement of the property where the temporary foreign workers live and or work. Just like all workers, temporary foreign workers are free to run errands, access services, and enjoy their time off work when not in quarantine, self-isolating, or otherwise restricted from doing so as per government laws and orders. Now, to all employers, Limiting a temporary foreign worker's movement may be considered abuse under immig immigration and refugee protection regulations and a violation of the temporary foreign worker program's conditions. And they provided uh, IRCC and ESDC or Service Canada provided examples of what you called as abuse. For example, threatening or intimidating a worker to not leave the location where they live or work. Imposing policies or agreements, whether oral or written, coerced or mandated by the employer, that restrict a worker's ability to leave their housing or work location, including situations where a worker may feel compelled to agree and or abide by a policy or request out of fear of reprisal. Physically confining a worker to their housing or work site without a legal authority, such as government or court-issued court, ordered, uh, court order. Government laws or orders may require employers to implement policies and practices that restrict a worker's movement, such as within their housing or workplace. In these cases, employers will be required to provide proof to Service Canada that such policy or practice adheres to laws or orders issued by a government authority. 
and employers are strongly encouraged to be transparent with their employees about government-imposed restrictions on and off the work site and to share relevant records. Now, if employers are being found to be non-compliant under the temporary foreign worker program conditions, they could be subject to forced warnings, administrative monetary penalties, temporary or permanent ban from the temporary foreign worker program and international mobility program, the publication, their name, their company name and address could be published on the Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada public website with details of the violation and or consequences. And if you're on the website of immigration, it could be accessed by the world or just anybody, right? And the revocation or suspension of previously issued LMIAs or labor market uh, impact assessment. So it is also important that workers, foreign workers are aware of, of and follow public health requirements and guidelines to ensure that they take steps to minimize the risk of infection and spread of the disease when they are out in the community. So temporary foreign workers uh, would be able to find resources about how to protect themselves and others uh, through government links. There's so many links there in multiple languages through the IRCC website, including ESDC or Service Canada uh, website. This is just really sad, Jane, right? Like, you know, for temporary foreign workers to be subjected to this type of abuse. Yeah, and, and, and I'm sure there are, you know, that there's a lot of good employers out there who will follow the regulations, but there are some who make it difficult for, for some of the workers. So, you know, we're just letting um, our colleagues know so that they can let their employer, um, LMIA employers know this to ensure that they follow the rules, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, so so yeah, uh, but I still believe that like majority of the employers are compliant, you know, compliant. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I still, yeah, because I have employers also that I work with and then, you know, they're just, um, they follow all the rules of the terms and conditions, you know, of the LMIA, of the work permit and all that stuff. So maybe these are meant to just make certain employers in Canada. Yeah. 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 So um, the next uh, public policy um, that was introduced uh, exempts certain out-of-status foreign nationals in Canada from immigration um, requirements, okay? So uh, the temporary public policy has been established uh, exempting foreign nationals uh, from certain requirements. And, and there's two elements to this, and, and I'll talk about the first one, and I'll let Marjorie talk about the second one. So that's talking about restoration. So typically when um, a foreign worker is out of status, they have the opportunity to restore within 90 days of losing this uh, temporary resident status. But um, now because there's uh, travel restrictions and you know uh, inabilities to get flights and so on and so forth, those who are on um, study permits, work permits, uh, they actually, if they've expired after January 30th, they now will have until December 31st of 2020 to apply to restore their status instead of the current 90 days. So they've almost got 330 days to restore their status, which is uh, an exceptional opportunity for them to, to uh, you know, get back into status so that's unheard of and we're very grateful to the government for offering that to the um, temporary um, um, uh, foreign nationals in Canada right yes so and yeah and the second one Marjorie the second yeah thank you Jean and the second element of this uh, temporary public policy is that the public policy allows former work permit holders with job offers to work while their restoration and work permit applications are being processed. So if approved under this public policy, applicants may be authorized to start their employment while waiting for the decision on the restoration and work permit applications. So actually this uh, public policy came into effect on July 14, 2020 and remains in effect until December 31, 2020. So uh, applications received on or before December 31, 2020 may benefit from this 
uh, public policy. So if they meet all the eligibility requirements and including all this, uh, uh, how do you call this? All the statutory conditions, you know, to apply under this policy, uh, they have they can start working. All that they're saying is that uh, if you have already submitted your application to restore and work permit extension application, you will benefit from this public policy by uh, you can already start working while yes. waiting for the decision of the application. Right. Yeah, or continue working. If or continue working. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, so yeah, so good. <clears throat> yeah, that's it for today, right? Yeah. So um, we just want to remind everyone that um, OS KPIC um, presentations every by uh, every biweekly now instead of every week. So sign up and ask your questions. Our experts are here to provide you with solutions to manage your files. And next week we will have our next meeting with IRCC or maybe it was this week, and our other departments related to immigration issues. And you will receive an invitation to send your questions from, from uh, KPIC office. So take advantage of it. Not only will we re receive your, um, will we receive our answers, but we can also transmit any adjustments. Our YouTube channel, myconsultant.ca, um, YouTube, uh, subscribe to it. KPIC reserves um, your events, whether it's in training, information center, and with the IMI forum or the IMI center. And um, we are all members of the member services, and we are all waiting for you next week for our next uh, new weekly newsletter. And that's it for today. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you, Marjorie. Thank you, Fiona. Yes, thank you. I, I just want to uh, remind everyone, if you haven't done so, uh, subscribe to KPIC's YouTube channel. And to all yeah. members, yeah, KPIC members, if you haven't registered to our NCIC 2020, we encourage you to register so that we all can see each other, to not only to learn, but to network, to connect and engage. And I'd like to end this session with a line from Pro uh, President Franklin Roosevelt's 1993 inaugural address to a nation paralyzed in the economic fear of the Great Depression. And I'd like to quote him, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. So let us all keep on going. Stay calm and carry on. Have a lovely day, everyone. Thank you very much and stay safe. Bye. Bye.